Hi, it's Katrina. From mysterious extraterrestrial signals to a valuable artifact hidden in plain sight, here are nine incredible recent discoveries. Number 9. A Strange Navigational Error Whale strandings are largely a mystery to scientists, who have struggled for decades to figure out what causes cetaceans to beach themselves on shore. They suspect that this can happen when a whale's natural navigation system goes awry, confusing the animal and leading them into an unsafe environment that prevents them from swimming back out to sea. An early 2020 study revealed that gray whales are five times more likely to become stranded when sunspots are highly prevalent, indicating a possible connection between high levels of radio waves and the movements of migratory animals. It's unknown whether gray whales navigate using magnetoreception, which is more or less a biologically built-in way of detecting the Earth's magnetic field, but it's likely that they are equipped with it because of their migratory lifestyle and because there are few other fathomable ways they would be able to effectively navigate over such vast distances throughout the world's oceans. There have been several previous reports linking magnetic storms to whale strandings, but this is a particularly well-done and convincing analysis, biologist Kenneth Lohman told Life Science. There are admittedly other reasons gray whales might become stranded, but the idea that something occasionally interrupts their detection of the Earth's magnetic field, or disrupts the magnetic field itself, and throws an animal off track has gained credibility through this recent research. In the words of lead study author and conservation biophysicist Jesse Granger, whales are stranding a lot more often when the sun is doing crazy stuff. Number 8. Mysterious Radio Signal from Space While searching for signs of alien life, astronomers detected an unexplained radio signal coming from the star closest to the sun, named Proxima Centauri. The small red star is located roughly 4.2 light-years from Earth. They also learned that at least two planets orbit Proxima Centauri, one of which may have a temperate, rocky, Earth-like atmosphere. The researchers observed the bizarre radio signal, dubbed BLC-1, in April and May of 2019, using Australia's Parkes Observatory, or aka The Dish. Their findings come as part of an ongoing, decade-long project called Breakthrough Listen, which searches for evidence of extraterrestrial beings among the nearest million stars to our planet. Team leader Sophia Sheik and other experts believe that BLC-1 is likely not of human origin, but some other form of life far away. National Geographic reports that the team is still analyzing the signal, but even just the remote hint of life beyond Earth has people excited. The signal has caught their attention more than any other findings that Breakthrough Listen has generated so far. The search for extraterrestrial life based on artificial or non-natural radio signals dates back to 1960, starting with Project Ozma. Since the beginning, researchers have searched for signals that resemble human communication like radio, Wi-Fi, GPS, and cell towers, trying to differentiate between something from space versus something made by humans. Over the years, technology improved and astronomers detected signals that came from previously unknown sources like pulsars and mysterious fast radio bursts and peritons that turned out to be from a microwave oven. Breakthrough Listen started in 2015 and has been scanning the skies for extraterrestrial sounds in a sea of signals produced from Earth. But BLC-1 appears to be radiating from Proxima Centauri and has passed all the tests so far that the team uses to filter out the signals made by us. The algorithm has been very optimistic and the team is still looking to determine if something else is out there. Number 7. Crinoid Fossils Some fossil discoveries change the way we can look at things forever. These strange things are not tentacled squid or alien octopus, but a different kind of creature entirely. During the Middle Cambrian period, around 300 million years before the dinosaurs emerged into existence, strange-looking marine creatures called crinoids appeared for the first time in the world's oceans. Crinoids are echinoderms related to modern-day starfish, sea urchins, and brittle stars. But the creatures of today look much different from many of their ancestors, known as fossil crinoids. These ancient fossils depict various oddly shaped creatures, including some that look like plants or flowers, earning certain species the nicknames of sea lilies, fairy money, and star stones. Complete crinoid fossils are extremely rare. Normally when they die, their soft tissue would just decay. Their soft tissue held together hundreds of mineral calcite plates that made up its skeleton, so over time everything pretty much dissolved. In the unusual instances where complete crinoid fossils are discovered, it means that the animal was buried rapidly after it died, and the lack of oxygen helped to preserve it. 
Crinoid fossils are extremely common in very few places, including the famous White Cliffs of Dover, the Silurian Rocks of Shropshire, and the Jurassic Rocks of the Dorset Coast in the UK. Also, like most unique things, Australia! Beyond their uniquely entertaining slash creepy appearance and ability to teach scientists about ancient life forms, they are useful for determining the age of the rocks in which they are found. Evidence shows that crinoids nearly went extinct at one point during the Permian period, but that they narrowly survived and eventually went on to live once again. Altogether, over 6,000 crinoid fossil species have been described, versus the 600 known species that live today. Number 6. Royal Viking Burial Archaeologists in Norway recently unearthed the remains of a Viking ship that may have served as the final resting place for a king, queen, or noble warrior. Ship burials were the ultimate expression of status and wealth. All that's left of the 62-foot-long, 16-foot-wide vessel is some rotting wood and nails. It was discovered southeast of Oslo and dates back to sometime between 750 and 850 AD. We don't know yet if this was a rowing or a sailing ship, archaeologist Newt Pasch told the BBC, pointing out that two 9th century vessels, the Gokstad and Toon ships, used a combination of rowing and sailing, but the newly discovered ship's keel is different from theirs. It was situated within a complex of over 20 other graves and was buried in a mound that farmers had flattened over many years. The site is located near Gel Mound, the second largest burial mound in Norway, which dates back between 400 and 500 AD. The ship clearly relates to the older graves and especially the large Gel Mound. It's clear that the Vikings wanted to relate to the past, excavation leader Christian Rodsrud explained. Excavations at the site began in 2019. No human remains have been found with the ship, but the grave was looted at some point, possibly by the deceased individual's political opponent, so some of its original contents were missing by the time archaeologists got to it. Besides the ship, the site contains numerous ring-shaped burials and what appear to be at least four building foundations. This place is full of history, and archaeologists are hoping the nails and remnants of the keel may allow them to build a replica in the future. Number 5. Swimming Terrestrial Dinosaur the largest known carnivorous dinosaur, Spinosaurus, roamed the swamps and rivers of what is now North Africa during the Cretaceous period, between 112 and 97 million years ago. There are two named species, the Egyptian spine lizard and the Moroccan spine lizard. These dinosaurs had very long, distinctive spines on their backs, forming a sail, hence the name spine lizard. The spines grew out of the animal's vertebrae, with each measuring up to 7 feet long, taller than almost all humans and they were likely connected by skin. Spinosaurus dwarfed Tyrannosaurus rex and even Giganotosaurus, and was the largest of all carnivorous dinosaurs, reaching between 52 and 59 feet long and weighing 7.7 .7 to 9.9 .9 tons. The first Spinosaurus fossil collection and description were destroyed during World War II. Another nearly complete skeleton was not found until 2008, when locals in a Moroccan desert town sought researchers' help identifying some bones that they had found. Shortly thereafter, scientists found even more bones in the area. In 2014, scientists released a study revealing that the fossil evidence shows that the Spinosaurus is the only known terrestrial dinosaur that not only knew how to swim, but spent a considerable amount of time in the water. The animal we are resurrecting is so bizarre that it is going to force dinosaur experts to rethink many things they thought they knew about dinosaurs, explained vertebrate paleontologist and steady leader Nizar Ibrahim. Spinosaurus had dense bones, crocodile-like teeth, and other characteristics typical of marine creatures, making it ideal for them to live and hunt in the water. They were not as efficient on land, which shows that they were only adapted to living there part-time at the most. Despite these extensive recent findings, there are still unanswered questions about the Spinosaurus, including exactly what its massive sail was used for. Number 4. An Artifact in Plain Sight According to a new study, an English resident used a dull marble slab as a stepping stone for mounting her horse for at least 10 years before researchers discovered that it is a rare ancient Roman artifact. After years of using the slab, the woman noticed an engraving of a laurel wreath on it one day. Suspecting that it may be more than an inconsequential hunk of stone, she turned it over to an archaeologist. Researchers ultimately traced the 25-inch long slab's history back to around 20 years ago, when it was unearthed in the village of White Parish in southern England. UK auction house Woolley & Wallace is handling the stone sale, and said that it was most likely brought to the area around 300 years ago, after being manufactured elsewhere, 
most likely in modern-day Greece or Turkey. It dates back to the 2nd century AD and is worth an estimated $20,400. Artifacts of this type often came into England as the result of grand tours in the late 18th and 19th century, when wealthy aristocrats would tour Europe learning about classical art and culture, Woolley & Wallace antiquity specialist Will Hobbs said in a statement. We assume that is how it entered the UK, but what is a complete mystery is how it ended up in a domestic garden, and that's where we'd like the public's help. The company hopes that someone will remember details about how the slab got to where it was found. Any ideas? Let me know in the comments below. Number 3. Millions of Galaxies Late last year, astronomers from Australia's national science agency Cicero identified 3 million previously unknown galaxies over a two-week period. Using the agency's state-of-the-art radio telescope, the Australian Square Kilometre Array Pathfinder, they mapped 83% of the observable universe. The telescope consists of 36 antennas situated in the outback of Western Australia. This was the first time researchers used the full array of antennas in a single sky survey. In other words, the first time they utilized the system to its full potential. What's most shocking about the study is that there are definitely more galaxies out there that were not picked up during the survey. The team will continue to conduct even more in-depth observations in hopes of learning more about what's out there in the distant universe, in places too far for humans to physically reach. We expect to find tens of millions of new galaxies in future surveys, Cicero astronomer David McConnell said in a statement. Throughout the project, the satellite snapped 903 pictures of the sky, which were combined using supercomputers to create one image. The agency plans to make these pictures available to the public through its website in the near future. Number 2. Color-Changing Rivers New research shows that one-third of rivers throughout the U.S. have turned from blue to yellow to green over the last 36 years. For this study, experts analyzed some 235,000 satellite images that NASA and the U.S. Geological Survey Landsat program captured between 1984 and 2018. Just 8% of the pictures showed rivers that were blue, while over half were yellow and over one-third were green. Most of the rivers are changing gradually and are not noticeable to the human eye, lead study author John Gardner told Life Science but areas that are the fastest changing are more likely to be man-made. A river's color depends on the amount of suspended settlement, algae, pollution, and dissolved organic matter the water contains. Typically, more algae and or less sediment means greener water, and more sediment means yellower water. 55%, over half, of the rivers studied varied in color with no discernible pattern, one-third changed in color over the 36-year period, and 12% maintained a consistent color. The rivers tended toward different hues based on the region, with rivers in the north and west taking on a greener tone while those in the eastern U.S. tended to be yellower. While rivers can change color with the seasons depending on rainfall, snowmelt, and other factors, Gardner pointed out in his own words that big trends to yellow or green can be worrying. Human activity can certainly change a river's color, as the images show, but these changes are not necessarily permanent, and the photos also show how water bodies can revert back to their original shade after being disturbed. A river's color is not a precise way of gauging its health or the well-being of a nearby ecosystem, but it's a useful measure for getting an idea of these factors, making the study worthwhile. Number 1. Unlikely Prey it's incredibly rare for predatory cats to target one another, even if one species is larger than the other. But scientists know that it sometimes happens because they have discovered ocelot remains in jaguar feces. They had never actually seen this unusual type of attack until March 2019, when they captured footage of a jaguar preying on an ocelot in Guatemala's Maya Biosphere Reserve. The team described their findings in a new study, pointing out that the attack happened during a drought and was perhaps prompted by extenuating circumstances. Although these predator-on-predator -predator interactions may be rare, there may be certain instances when they become more prevalent, and one of those could be over contested water sources, study author Daniel Thornton said in a statement. Maybe the two cats went to the same watering hole and a clash ensued. During a drought, watering holes are scarcer than normal, giving the species fewer options of where to go for a drink and increasing the likelihood of a hostile encounter. These fights between predators could happen more often as climate change causes more droughts in the region and water becomes scarcer. Researchers have spotted other fights happening at the same watering hole, including one battle between two jaguars. They also observed seven different jaguars visiting the site, an unusual number for a solitary animal that rarely has overlapping territories. The ocelot's fate is unknown. 
In the footage, as the ocelot stoops over the water's edge, a jaguar enters the picture, grabs it by the neck, and drags it out of sight. Thanks for watching! Which discovery was your favorite? Which one would you like to learn more about? Let me know in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already! See you soon! Bye!